Hey guys, Constance here from CosmopolitanCornbread.com. So I'm doing something a little bit different today. You'll notice right off the bat that I'm posting a video on Saturday, which is not a day that I usually post videos except during garden season and I do my weekly garden tours. But I was asked by Katie from Heritage Ways to join in on a collaboration with her and two other channels, Vicki from Vicki's Country Home and Lori from Whippoorwill Holler. And we are going to be sharing some tips and tricks on cooking. And the focus of what we're going to do is the pantry. But before I get started, I just want to share with you a little bit about uh, how I have my kitchen set up and how I do everything here. So first of all, if you are new here at Cosplant Cornbread, if you hear some strange noise coming from the other room, I have four dogs and every so often they like to start wrestling and just generally making noise as soon as I turn on the camera. So my husband and I and our three children were an active duty army family and we lived all over the place for 25 years and we always had this dream of someday having a homestead. And a few years ago we bought our property, retired from army life, and have planted roots in northern Alabama. And one of the things when we were house hunting we really really wanted to find an older home, something with character, a farmhouse, because years ago we lived in North Carolina and we were able to find this beautiful 1910 farmhouse and were able to live there for a while and we absolutely loved it. We loved the character, we loved the history behind the home and we really wanted to be able to find something like that to live in the rest of our days. Unfortunately, when it came to actually be time to house hunt, while we did find one or two houses that had a little bit of character, uh, they were either way too much of a fixer upper for us to even want to tackle, or they were well out of our budget that we set for ourselves. So our focus became finding a home that had the land that we wanted and had the space to accommodate all of our our plans and so when we purchased our home our home was only nine years old and it was very cookie cutter very plain Jane it was smaller which was intentional because we didn't want to ever feel the need to downsize but one of the things the house was lacking was character and storage and so I have gotten pretty creative with how I do things here in my kitchen and I find ways to store things uh, in such a way that make it easy to function in my kitchen as well as look nice. So because I have limited counter space, I don't want to clutter it up with too many appliances. So I have my microwave over there at the end of the uh, kitchen because I don't actually use it very often. It is, it is rarely used and so it doesn't qualify to take prime real estate on my limited counter space. The other thing that I don't have on my counter that many people do is my coffee maker. I actually have a little coffee nook over in the corner. I call it my, my coffee station or my coffee island. It's just a simple little cabinet that I picked up at Hobby Lobby on sale and so I have it all set up there. I've got shelves hanging above it and have decorated it uh, very simply. Now I do have a couple of things that I want to do to alter that cabinet. For instance, I've decided I want to actually paint it white so that it is a little bit brighter because right now that corner is a little bit dark. Because on the same end of the kitchen but opposite corner, I have this big beautiful antique uh, Hoosier cabinet and I'm certainly not going to paint that and so to lighten up at least part of that end of the kitchen, I want to paint the, the coffee cabinet. Uh, white to brighten it up and then it'll match my cabinets that I have here which have also been painted. Now my kitchen is still a little bit of a work in progress. I have a few other things that I'm still waiting to finish and then it'll be a hundred percent done but it has come a long way since we moved in three and a half years ago. So I mentioned the antique Hoosier cabinet. Now of course I have it decorated with some antiques and things just to kind of give it that rustic feel 
but I primarily use that cabinet for storing things like my kitchen towels, my kitchen linens, which I have folded in an old basket, metal basket, that I found when we lived in Germany. Uh, I think it might actually be a fryer basket used for things like schnitzel, but it was the perfect size and shape for holding all of my kitchen towels. And then the shelf above it has all sorts of mismatched types of linens and napkins, and those are used for photography props because I'm a food blogger and I do a lot of food photography, and when you do a lot of food photography, you need props and so that is what I store on that shelf right there. But now this is a collab all about the pantry and so let me talk to you about how I set up my pantry area. Now again, our kitchen had very limited space. It didn't have an actual pantry um, built into the kitchen and so one of the first things that I did in my laundry room, which you can see the door to it right back there in the corner, we had an empty wall. And so what I did was I built some simple shelving out of uh, particle board and some two by threes and set that up in there. And then all of the extra things, things I don't necessarily use every single day, um, things like my preserves and canned goods and all of that can go in the laundry room right there on that shelving and it's easy to access because it's directly inside that door so it's very convenient but it is out of the way and it's not taken up uh, cabinet space which again is very limited here in the kitchen and you'll notice right away when you see the contents of my kitchen cabinets and the pantry that there's a whole lot of mason jars and I use mason jars for several reasons First of all, you can get mason jars for next to nothing, especially if you do uh, yard sale shopping or thrift store shopping. You can find all sorts of sizes and shapes of mason jars, and it's a very economical choice. Secondly, they do come in all sorts of shapes and sizes, and so no matter what it is that you are needing to store, you can find a mason jar that is just the right size. I've got them everywhere from uh, four ounce ones to half gallon mason jars and I just, I love using them. And then when it comes to grocery shopping time and I need to make my list, I can look at those jars and because most of them are clear, I can at a glance see exactly what I'm getting low on and I can add it to my list right away without having to open up containers to see inside uh, you know, how much I have in there. And there's another great reason of why I use mason jars uh, for my storage. I mentioned earlier that we used to live in a beautiful old farmhouse and while we absolutely loved living there, there were a couple of challenges that we faced uh, during that time. First of all, we had an ant infestation and if you've ever had ants get in your kitchen and have had to go through and toss out a lot of groceries because of it, you find out real quick that you need food storage that is ant proof. And so that was the number one reason that I switched to using the canning jars, the mason jars, for all of my food storage. Uh, pretty much as soon as I bring something home, sometimes before I even need it and need to open the container, I'm going to take it out and put it straight into a canning jar to store it because that way I know it is bug proof. Now when we first moved here to this house, I actually kept our feed in the spare bedroom in uh, great big cans. And initially I did it to keep bugs from getting in it. However, that led to its own dilemma because one day I brought home a bag full of feed that was full of weevils. And next thing I knew, I had weevils all over my house, including in my pantry but because I store everything in those canning jars, I had no weevils getting in my food and I had no food that had to be uh, wasted. Not only are canning jars bug proof, but they are also airtight and waterproof. And a few months after we had had that ant infestation and I had switched everything over to the canning jars, we had an incident where our roof was leaking and I went into my kitchen one day 
and there was water all over my counter and I opened the cabinet where all of my groceries were kept and there was water running down the wall in there. But all of my food was safe because it was all in the airtight canning jars. Now, of course, there's a lot of things that look alike, different flours or salts or sugars, depending on what kind you use. They can all look identical. I have a very inexpensive label maker that I use to create labels for most of the jars. And so that way I can also tell right away what is in each of them. But even if you don't have a label maker, you can use masking tape or that moshi tape with a permanent marker, or you can even write on the jars directly with the permanent marker. Because while it's permanent marker, it isn't permanent on glass and it washes right off with soap and water. You'll notice on some of the jars, there's actually writing on them in addition to the label. Because what I've done is I've labeled what is in there, but then down at the bottom of the jar, I'll write what brand it was because that way, as I'm experimenting with different ingredients, if I find one that I really, really like, I'll know exactly which brand it was that I had bought last time so that I can get that kind again. Now, I do have a lot of glass in my kitchen. I have never been a fan of using plastic. Uh, even before it came out that there were a lot of dangerous chemicals in plastic that was used for food products or dishes and things like that. So when that came out, I was really happy that I'd always had um, a leaning towards using glass. All right, so that is the basic rundown of how I have my kitchen and my storage set up. And over on the other channels that are doing this collaboration, they will also be sharing uh, things about their pantry and how they do their storage and, and all of their tips and tricks as well. So I will leave the links to their channels down in the show notes below and you can be sure to check them out. I'll also be making a playlist that you can find on my channel page uh, with all of the videos that will be coming from this series. There will be three more videos after this one coming up on Saturdays with this collaboration. It's called the Mix and Go Pantry Mixes Collaboration. And just as the name sounds, we are going to be sharing our favorite mixes, our favorite shortcuts, for in the kitchen from baking mixes to homemade spice blends. So thanks for stopping in today. My name is Constance from Cosmopolitan Cornbread. And if you are new to my channel, I do three videos a week on homesteading, home cooking, and back to basics. And be sure to check out my blog, cosmopolitancornbread.com, where I have hundreds of recipes and articles, as well as my new blog, wholesomeskillet.com, where I have a focus of grain-free and sugar-free healthy recipes. So thanks again to Katie for inviting me to do this collaboration, and I look forward to seeing everyone's videos that they share in the coming weeks. So I hope you all have a great weekend and week ahead, and I'll talk to you all next time. Mm -hmm.